Sure, absolutely. I think maybe even easier is training. So um, there is a, a company that, um, a large hotel company that actually just changed its training model and saved about 20% carbon emissions just by changing the way rooms are cleaned. So I was a housekeeper at one point in time and we were taught that when you walk into the room, you go to the bathroom and you start the shower because, and you turn the water on in the sink because you gotta get the toothpaste off. It's all hard. Um, there are ways to train associates that don't cost any money and can reduce your carbon footprint, reduce your water. You know, you can uh, take advantage of water savings just by focusing on the little things that add up day to day. So those are a couple ideas that don't cost any money and are, are easy to implement because you're already training somebody. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Social Hotelier podcast with me, Sam Eric Ruthman. The two topics that I talked about these days, sustainability being one, because it's actually, a, on a, it's not only about the what people like to talk about, but actually what the consumers are also expecting. And then hotels and hospitality service providers have no other choice than to look critically at their operations to see what, are they, can, what they can do in, in terms of improving their uh, operations and also providing all kinds of services that improves the sustainability factor into the hotel. Uh, also, it's about creating the ultimate guest experience. So sustainability doesn't mean that you remove uh, the most of the towels and you say that we are, you're helping to save the planet. There's not much more than that. So my guest today is the CEO and uh, Experience Alive, Sue Graves, and we'll talk about these topics today. So welcome, Sue, and thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much, Sam. It's a pleasure to be talking about this important topic. So first of all, just to uh, have an understand about your background, so can you tell me about, a bit about your professional experience and why you founded Experience Alive? Absolutely. Um, Sam, uh, hospitality has been in the blood since uh, at a very young age, but I worked uh, with Marriott Hotels for um, nearly 29 years in five different brands um, and then went to the convention center industry to help build a uh, sort of roadmap or blueprint, if you will, for hospitality in the convention center space um, and bring them to five-star hotel level service. Um, when I left there, we were named number one convention center in North America. And at that point in time, it was also during the pandemic. And my friends were calling me from the industry saying, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> um, there has to be a better way. And we lost you know, a large population of hospitality uh, workers, which everybody is aware of, and that continues to, to occur. And so my heart, honestly, and my passion for the industry is what drove me to start my business. Uh, I was cleaning 200 toilets a day, and I said, there's got to be <laughs> some way that I can help this industry. And so I started sourcing solutions, and I found some amazing solutions that help support the industry. And so I'm on a mission to modernize the industry and help increase the value of the asset for owners and operators and make life in the industry easier and um, and more productive. Uh, and that includes the advancement of sustainability solutions to, to continue to improve, increase the value of the asset. Very good. Uh, you have mentioned something about sustainability reporting. So could you talk about, uh, speak about sustainability reporting? Why is it important for businesses today? Sustainability reporting is very important. Um, a lot of people in the industry, number one, we, we don't do a good job as an industry promoting ourselves. Um, we promote the people that work for us. We do that very well on property, but we don't do a very good job of successfully promoting the advancements in sustainability in particular, because it's, it's not a phase, it's a trend, and it is all about climate change right now in our industry, and there are ways to support sustainability initiatives in our industry and increase the value of the asset. The importance of reporting is to ensure that you are third-party validated, um, not just reporting, um, and I have found the only company um, actually based in London that can report on the E, the S, and the G. And for our listeners, if you're not aware of what those stand for, it is environmental, social, and governance um, is what that stands for. And there are many companies that allow the opportunity to, for reporting of environmental 
sustainability, but not the S and the G. So um, that's very important. Um, they provide a roadmap and consultancy services and help shepherd you or guide you, if you will, uh, towards more sustainable um, property. Okay. So could you just share about the, what, what are the key elements that should be included in a comprehensive sustainability report? Well, the key elements are, again, the E, the S, and the G. Um, from an environmental standpoint, the focus is really on um, reducing the carbon footprint and the utilization of manufacturing to help reduce that footprint. Like, In other words, what does your procurement uh, process look like in your hotel to have them help reduce that carbon footprint? So uh, I work with a, um, a company called MindClick that actually does sustainability reporting for manufacturers and consultancy for them and supports the hospitality industry from a procurement standpoint, because that's very important part of the process. Yeah. I mean, there's a common belief that sustainable solutions are expensive. Can you share some examples of the affordable, sustainable practices that business can ad adopt? Absolutely. There's a company that I work with that I've sourced. Um, they are in the USA, but they work uh, worldwide. Um, we all know that energy costs are rising um, substantially. Um, Europe and USA suffer this uh, primarily, and there are solutions out there. This one in particular can um, reduce energy costs 40 to 46%. Um, I know that sounds like a very high number, but it has been proven <laughs> um, in, in tests. They are actually uh, working with uh, a very large enterprise hotel company uh, and have two test models going on. One is Le in Lyon um, in France, uh, and the other one, I believe, I believe there's two in France right now, but they have proven in that just the first month to reduce the energy cost by 40%. This solution does not require you to put holes in the walls. They actually, through API integration, they are actually able to uh, work with your current thermostat supplier. Let's just say Honeywell, um, it's well known. Uh, Verdant uh, is, well, is well known. They can work with them to integrate the API solution uh, to help reduce those energy costs. And they have a proprietary solution that actually works to accommodate the utilization of the fan motor, believe it or not, which takes a lot of uh, a lot of work to keep uh, keep the room cooled or heated. So yes, absolutely, a good solution, very good solution, and they work worldwide. Okay, we have uh, several of the of the viewers of this show are uh, small business owners. They have the small hotels, the couples who own the hotels, and uh, maybe you can share with maybe some low cost high impact sustainable uh, sustainability initiatives that uh, small businesses can implement because there is also, uh, there's always the idea that the people want to be, be sustainable, but one thing after another, you notice you have, you don't get enough sales, you need to get more occupancy, and then suddenly the priorities changes. But maybe some couple of ideas or tips that you could share for the, for the small uh, business owners. Sure, absolutely. I think um, first things first, if, if you can um, use uh, local, local purveyors, um, when you think about carbon emissions and you think about the footprint, you have to also think about the logistics footprint. So um, oftentimes we're you know, um, acquiring um, through procurement uh, items that are needed in the hospitality industry that have to be shipped from long distances. So to the extent that you can find local purveyors, um, include them in the procurement process, I think that is ideal and an easy step. Um, number two, and maybe even easier, is training. So um, there is a, a company that, um, a large hotel company that actually just changed its training model and saved about 20% carbon emissions just by changing the way rooms are cleaned. So I was a housekeeper at one point in time and we were taught that when you walk into the room, you go to the bathroom and you start the shower because, and you turn the water on in the sink because you gotta get the toothpaste off. That's all hard. Um, there are ways to train associates that don't cost any money and can reduce your carbon footprint, reduce your water 
you know, you can uh, take advantage of water savings just by focusing on the little things that add up day to day. So those are a couple ideas that don't cost any money and are, are easy to implement because you're already training somebody. So just yeah, your training excellent. plan. Excellent. Um, are there some, how to um, measure the return on investment for a sustainable solution? Uh, are there some formulas that you can talk about or how, how do you see that should be handled? Yeah, so the company that um, I previously spoke about um, that's located in London actually um, works with the stock exchange to um, help uh, owners um, increase their opportunity for um, uh, applying for um, additional funding for to reduce their debt. And by way of showing the validation that they are implementing sustainable solutions, they're able to acquire funding and financing for debt reduction at a greater, at a higher level. So that has been proven. Um, that is an easy way, uh, is that whole third party validation uh, is very, very important and making certain that it's done by a reputable company. Yeah. yeah. What are some common myths about costs associated with sustainability and how can we debunk them? <laughs> well, it is interesting that you bring this up because, and I'm sounding like a broken record here, but the, the myth, the biggest myth is people are running away from sustainability because the thought is, and the myth is, that's very strong, is if I implement sustainable solutions, it's going to cost me more money. I've just described a couple of solutions that actually reduce your operating expenses. If you can reduce energy by 46% and you can take advantage of, in the USA at least, IRA funding, um, Inflation Reduction Act is what that stands for. Uh, in the United States, the Inflation Reduction Act allows you to write off 40% on your taxes for the implementation of sustainable solutions. I'm not sure what Europe has, but I'm sure they have something because they're pretty far ahead of America. So yeah. now I've just given you two more solutions. Utilize the tax reduction that is available to you to implement sustainable solutions that are going to reduce energy costs and make more efficient your operation much more efficient. The additional one is the implementation of robotics um, and AI. Robotics and AI are growing rapidly. Um, technology is advancing 7x right now. So for every one year you thought technology was going to be moving forward, we're actually advancing seven years in less than a year each year. Wow. So that is a statistic that is, is, is discussed. So you see the advancement with chat GPT and AI. There's a lot of funding, VC funding and PE funding around the advancement of AI. Uh, there is a solution that can actually, you know, you, utilizing AI that actually sounds like a person that you can put on the front desk and you're paying a front desk agent about 500 bucks a month, and that's an AI agent that can answer 80% of the repetitive calls that come in. Now, what does that do for your people? The human employees that need to work with humans to resolve a problem now have the opportunity to do so. So what are you doing? You're increasing your guest satisfaction. You're bringing your staff to a higher value, uh, which is what they want. Your turnover will be reduced because most of those employees do not want to keep answering the same questions over and over and over again. They want to work at a higher level. They want to be developed. Um, so that's those are just a couple of, of ways to do that. Uh, the cost of labor continues to increase. Robotic solutions can address that uh, and mitigate uh, the reduction in staff. Yeah. There's also a common perception the purpose of having uh, various sustainable solutions is less about saving the planet, but improving the profitability of the hotel. Uh, what are your thoughts about this point of view? Well, in all fairness to our business, owners have a fiduciary responsibility to, you know, make money. Um, and so there's nothing... I don't think an owner should be shy about that. Um, and I think if they are making money, and I think it can be done, both can be accomplished, Sam. They can make money, they can reduce expenses, they can improve the planet. 
I just shared a couple of solutions that can do all three. So yeah. it's a win-win-win solution um, through sustainability. If people, if ideally owners and operators would open their mind to what sustainable solutions exist that can help me reduce emissions and help me save money. Yeah, also I think the, the hotels can do a better job in communicating this, not as a cost-saving exercise, but more of the what are the benefits for the customer and also and benefits for the community, in fact. So I think it's just have to be a little bit more proactive in the in the storytelling side. And it doesn't have to be boring and statistics can be more fun also, but just get the point across in a very positive way. And I think that can also help a little bit. I com- couldn't agree more with you. Um, less than 30% of what <laughs> hoteliers are accomplishing are actually shared. So if we can just up that to 50%, I think our industry would be a lot better off. So to your point, uh, we need to do a better job of telling our story about sustainability. In its current state, you know, the globally, uh, the hospitality industry is responsible for about 1% of all carbon emissions. We are one of the highest um, users of carbon, uh, emitters of carbon. Um, you know, if you think about the golf courses and the restaurants and the food waste and things like that, and the labor that it takes to run a hotel, um, that's a huge, over 350 billion tons of carbon emissions come from the hospitality industry. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk a little bit about some real world examples because you know you're dealing with a lot of hotels and businesses. So could you share some success stories of a company, hotel or restaurant that implemented sustainable solutions and saw reduction in expenses? And you mentioned something already, but maybe you have some couple of more because I think we need to uh, entice people to uh, take action with these things. Yeah, I've explained one already, so I won't I won't redo that one. The the energy savings, however, there is one that. Um, from a, a water reduction standpoint, water is our most valuable asset, if you think about it, um, on the planet. Um, there's a company that I work with that's based in the USA that um, has a very, very interesting solution. It works like an Alexa for water. So um, this solution attaches to a water pipe in less than 10 minutes and can actually tell you within 200 feet where a leak might be. Um, just by the sound of the drip of the water in a pipe. So it's a very interesting solution. It, they uh, use it for hotels worldwide, in addition to multifamily um, locations. So if you think about apartment complexes and what, and that uh, the, the amount of piping that it takes to go run through a complex or a large uh, hotel, you wouldn't know where the leak is until you have damage in your rooms. So they can mitigate damage and they have done so. Um, They probably can save close to 15% to 20% of your water consumption um, on an annual basis. And so they, yeah. That's very good. Those are new things I'm also learning while we are speaking. So I think I'm I'm sure there's a lot of people who are sharing the same thing that uh, at the end of the show, we will of course give you have a chance to give your contact details because I'm sure they will have a lot of questions and coming up about to, these things. Happy to support the industry and support them. Good. Uh, what uh, tools or resources would you recommend for businesses looking to start their sustainability journey on a budget? Well, I think the validation that the company that I work with that can validate the E, the S, and G has consultancy services that are very reasonably priced. Um, I think for many hoteliers, they need, I call it shepherding, but they need some consultancy, some advice, some where do I start? And when you hire um, a consultancy company like them, they will shepherd you. Um, There's no pass fail, uh, which is why I like this company a lot because they focus on goals or ambitions and they focus on where do you want to go and they help you get there. Um, Reducing your carbon emissions implementing solutions that can save you money all at the same time and third third party validated increasing the value of your asset um, as you continue to restructure your debt finance refinancing and things like that that's an easy affordable way to get started excellent 
So about uh, looking a little bit uh, to the, towards the future, what emerging trends in sustainability reporting should uh, businesses be aware of? Well, two things right off the bat. And I, I, I don't like to talk about the future because the future is now and these exist now, but they need to rapidly grow into the future in order for us to yeah. continue operating our businesses. Uh, our industry overall is suffering from about a 70% turnover annually. Um, it might be closer to 73% turnover annually. Turnover costs about 8000 US dollars per employee. So you can do the math on that and figure out that we've got to get this under control. Our industry is yeah. also about a million people shy of filling positions that are needed. Um, there is um, productivity gains of approximately 51% by the implementation of robotics. Uh, robotics, those robots are made from sustainable materials, most of them, and robotics can help with vacuuming um, large areas, uh, using your people, the human labor that you have at a higher level. Uh, so uh, the implementation of robotics for security, vacuuming, mopping, uh, and, and various other things like that, um, are of great use for the industry to adopt immediately. Um, they are a proven ROI of less than about one and a half years. Um, some of them are less than a year. The other opportunity that exists currently and will grow rapidly in the future is the adoption of AI. I explained the PBX sort of operator solution. It's about $500 US per month, you're paying more for, for that now for an employee, taking away 80% of the call volume, well, 60 to 80% of the call volume, because AI will continually learn based upon how you are responding to the customer. So now you have consistent messaging for the customer, which increases the guest satisfaction. You've got an employee that's happier, so they're probably going to stay, which means you're going to reduce turnover. And you're offering a solution to also reduce repetitive tasks and take away potential injuries um, using robotics. So I would say the key areas are robotics and AI um, need faster implementation into our industry to accommodate the labor scarcity that we are experiencing right now. Excellent. So do you, do you see that the cost of sustainable solutions uh, will, uh, how will they be evolving over the next, I mean, in the future? I'm, I'm not expecting you to tell me well, what's going to happen, but you just from the way you see are the costs going gradually down because that might be a initial implementation has been quite expensive or how do you see it? Yeah, I think the cost of sustainability, um, the implementation of sustainable solutions, I've described many of them now, will um, continue to decrease. Uh, what used to take about six years ROI from an implementation of either a sustainable solution that includes robotics or otherwise will be and is already reduced to about one to two years max. And oh. that will continue to uh, do so, allowing the operator to see value and reduce the carbon emissions um, in a more immediate way. Mm. Well, there will be always somebody listening here and say that, uh, and you need to give a good advice. What would you give a, to a, advice to a business that are hesitant adopting sustainable practices due to the perceived costs? Call me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I will change your... Good. There you go. What's the myth? Uh, no, uh, the, the, the highlight of my day, Sam, is when I am speaking with large enterprise organizations or even smaller. Um, sometimes the smaller ones, the smaller properties need the most help, Right. Um, yeah. When I talk to them and I share uh, solutions to help them overcome the obstacle that they have in place, the best answer that I receive that makes my day is when they respond with, that exists? And I say, yes, that exists. And that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. I am really passionate about our industry and passionate about modernizing our industry and making for a better guest and associate experience. Excellent. So how can businesses communicate the cost benefits of their sustainability efforts to stakeholders? I'm sure there must, must be a way of communicating. And what do you think would be a sort of advice for those uh, businesses? Well, I think using a third party validator where you actually have to log and your work, right? The hard work that you're doing to implement 
sustainable solutions is actually tracked and validated by a third party. You can share that now with shareholders, right? They've put it in a, a format that is shareable, that is utilized um, and approved for uh, EU and USA um, debt refinancing. Uh, and that's why I work with this particular solution provider because they actually can validate and have proven they can help increase, help you increase the value of your asset as you merge and uh, for mergers and acquisitions as well. Very good. Okay, now this is a little bit about, about a little bit about personal. What inspired you to get involved in sustainability and what keeps you motivated? Well, my passion for the industry, I hope is quite clear by now. <laughs> my passion for sustainability is rising because a lot of hotel companies, owners and operators are asking me to help source solutions for sustainability. And then when I find those, I get really excited about it. One of those in particular is 3D printing. So I have found a company that actually can, pre, can 3D print uh, FF &E, any FF &E that is four by four by four. So think tables, think chairs, think wall sconces, think planters, think anything four by four by four. And they take plastic bottles, they crush them, turn them into pallets, and then use them to print these objects. Now imagine building a hotel now and your wall sconces are actually 3D printed. Any color, any brand color, they can match anything. They can put your logo on it. Um, these are some amazing solutions that keep me going from a sustainability standpoint and a passion for the industry to help support modernizing and thinking differently about how do we accommodate that. The footprint isn't from a foreign country either. This is in the USA. So now you're immediately just by from a procurement standpoint saving carbon emissions by saving your logistics footprint which a lot of people are not thinking about right now that all comes into play when you think about overall carbon emissions reduction very good so as many of our listeners know you know i'm very curious about the technology here and i always try to keep up what's going on and, and today i'm also learning some new things but I'm also interested, what I notice now, of course, during the pandemic, where suddenly the hotels start to use the, the self-check-in, uh, digital concierges, the keyless entries. So I'm just curious uh, to get your view, because you talked about robotics uh, and on automation hotels. Do you think it's a way of the future, less human contact? Or how do we go about making sure that uh, we, we still have that uh, human touch in, in, in the services? Well, I think... Uh, the implementation of, that's a, that's a great question. Um, robotics aren't meant to replace humans. Robotics are meant to do the repetitive tasks so the humans can be out in front taking care of the guests and their needs. So there's a, there's a hotel that I work with in San Francisco that actually is ordering a third robot. It's a delivery robot. The guests love it because they have faster service. They don't necessarily have to tip the robot. Um, and the robot talks to them. So they get what they need, they get quicker service, they can get their coffee and croissant um, delivered to them in their room at a time when they want it. Uh, and this hotel, this hotel in particular, uh, you know, has gained a lot of traction from a social media perspective, in addition to reducing their carbon, for, carbon footprint, uh, addressing the labor shortage, and increasing the revenue. Their revenue's gone up 20% in this just by having robotics deliver the small things that the guests want and need right away, which I think is something that we fail to understand is like, what does the guest really want? When they call, they want delivery quickly, efficiently. And, you know, in its current state, sometimes you have an engineer delivering a towel to a room. Well, you know what? That towel delivered by a robot probably is cleaner. So we need to think about all of these things uh, when we're thinking about the implementation of solutions, sustainable or otherwise, and what the impact is for the customer. The customer just wants the service. Yeah, very good. So, so I have two more questions before uh, we wrap sure. up today. Uh, one question is that I like to ask all my guests, besides what we have 
talked about and everything you have shared. What other trends do you see happening in hospitality that hoteliers should take note of now? Well, I think I think the trends right now, the biggest trend that everybody's talking about, and it's a real trend, is AI, the implementation of AI and machine learning. And frankly, from, um, from a hotelier's perspective, understanding that training and development, the top two reasons our associates are leaving now is lack of leadership. They're not getting the training and development they need. It's not wages. Everybody thinks it's wages. Yes, you have to have, pay a good wage. I'm not suggesting that you lower your wage. What I'm suggesting is the boss, very important. So what are we doing to grow our leaders? Number two, reason people leave is they don't see an avenue for training and development for themselves personally in the culture within which they're working. They take the job because they want to take care of guests. Our employees are not taking a job to clean a room. They want to be associated with an industry that works with people, people serving people. We can keep that and maintain that by the implementation of AI and machine learning tools and changing the way we train. So one of the, I have two solution providers that offer bite-sized training. When I'm talking about bite-sized training, I'm talking about no more than two to five minutes. They are empowered to take this training when they have time to take it. Um, Gone are the days where you get 50 to 100 people in a room and the HR person standing in front of the room saying, this is what we're going to learn today. Um, That may not be a good time period for a chef that's got prep for 3,000, for a banquet for 3,000 the next day. So are you allowing the opportunity for driving engagement for training and development in the right manner because that's the way your company's done it? Or are you changing based upon what the needs are of your associates that at the end of the day are serving your customers? So allow people to have the autonomy and the engagement for delivering training the way people want to receive it today. Improve the training and development using AI, ML, utilize modern solutions, technology solutions to attract and retain our future hospitality leaders. People coming out of college right now are not looking to join our industry so they can do paperwork and repetitive tasks. They are looking to join our industry because they want to work with people and they have a passion for the industry, a passion for hospitality, which is what we teach them. So let's give them what they want and let's keep them. Wrap our arms around them with technology and keep them in our industry because they are our future leaders. Well said, well said, Sue. Well, I'm sure the listeners will have some comments about this. So if you're listening now to this episode and uh, and you're on Apple Play, so please write a review. And if you write write a review, I will give you a really a a shout out uh, in my next episode because this was a recorded episode. But I'm sure you must have learned something uh, in this half an hour. We had a great discussion. But now my final question is for you. If people are interested to find more about Experience Alive, how can they do so? You can find me on LinkedIn, Susan Graves, G-R-A, V as in Victor, E, S as in Sam. Um, I'm the lady in the red dress, so uh, that's my profile picture. So find me on LinkedIn, that's easiest. Uh, send me an email, Susan, or uh, sorry, sue at experiencealive.com, uh, and maybe we can put that somewhere. Uh, but it's just how it sounds, Experience Alive is one word. Dot com and my name is easy to spell S U E. So Sue at experiencealive.com. If you want to check out my website, it is www.experiencealive.com. So easy to see what I do, um, the areas of our industry that I address by sourcing solutions to accommodate the modernization and the benefit of the employees and guests experience, um, which is what my primary focus is. That's fantastic. I will put this in the show notes. So for everyone who has, has listened in that uh, you will see, find the contact details. So Sue, thank you very much. I appreciate you joining today's episode and thanks for all the fantastic insight. It's a pleasure, Sam. And I appreciate the audience and the opportunity to share solutions to help our hoteliers, owners and operators make more money and save the environment at the same time. 
Thanks for joining us this week on The Social Hotelier Show. Make sure to visit our website, thesocialhoteliershowblueberry.net, where you can subscribe to the show in Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, or via RSS, so you never miss a show. While you're at it, if you find value in this show, we appreciate the rating in Apple Podcast. Or if you simply tell a friend about the show, that will help us out too. Be sure to tune in for our next episode.